Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere And each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I am back with you today. Welcome. It's Eric Erickson here across the nation. Delighted to have you. Really glad to have you with me. Uh, I gotta, I, I, I'm going to begin with something out of the box before we get into the news because I was so profoundly moved by it. And I think you will be as well. Some of you will cry. <laughs> Some of you will cry. Trust me. Uh, but I, and it's not my, my, ju- I don't I have a, do not have a desire to move you to tears, but in all honesty and candor, I will be back. I'm going to leave after Friday and be gone, but we'll be back on December 23rd for my Christmas show, as I do every year. You know, when I started this thing, they they said, don't do it after I did a Good Friday show, and then so many people demanded it. Uh, now I do a Good Friday show, and I do a Christmas show. I'm not sure, for those of you listening on WSB, if it'll just air on Friday, or um, in the past, we've repeated it through out uh, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. I have no idea on that. But I will tell you, a couple of years ago, I decided, you know, instead of me just talking for three hours, why don't I interview some theologians, some pastors, uh, and talk just about the, the pastoral angle, particularly at this time of year, people struggle struggle mightily with depression. I, I, I want to be very open and honest and transparent with all of you. I am struggling with depression right now, with just a malaise, and it honestly has a very simple reason. The sun, I haven't seen it since last week, and it has affected my mood, I can tell. Every day I get up hoping for sunshine, and we haven't had sun since sometime last week, and it has suddenly, in the last couple of days, I'm really mindful of it. You don't know whether it's the evening or the morning. The street lights are on all day long. I am really tired of it. But some people struggle mightily with depression at this time of year in particular because of the commercials you see. People have the perfect family, the happy family. They've got all their friends and family with them. They have a pile of presents under the tree. They have the perfect Christmas tree. My gosh, I want a designer to come do my Christmas tree sometime, but that would mean throwing away all the ornaments the kids did when they were four that I can't bring myself to throw away. They got the perfect turkey or the perfect ham. They got the perfect spread. They got the perfect table. They got the perfect house. They've got that car with the big bow who only sociopaths go out and put their family in $75,000 of debt and don't tell their spouse so they can put a giant ribbon on a car. And it brings on a level of depression. There are some of you right now who have lost or are on the verge of losing a loved one. Some of you have family who are struggling with disease terminally, and it weighs on you at the holiday season. So when I interview pastors for this program, and I always do it ahead of time because it's really inconvenient to ask a a preacher, hey, can you come on my show Christmas Eve when your candlelight service is in three hours? So I always do the interviews in advance around their schedule. And I have started a tradition of interviewing the president of the Southern Baptist Convention every year. I know most of my listeners are Baptists. Wherever you are nationwide, the majority of you are Baptists. And this year for next Friday, I decided I wanted to interview Bart Barber. He is the new president of the Southern Baptist Convention. And we did the interview yesterday, and I was so profoundly moved By his answer to my question of pastorally, how do you talk to people who are suffering despair or depression at this time of year, I'm not going to wait until December 23rd to run that portion of the interview with you. To hear his whole interview, you'll have to come back next Friday. I'll be here with you. But I, I, y'all, I'm, you may need Kleenex, fair warning, but you got to hear this. This is me asking the question to Bart Barber the president of the Southern Baptist Convention, who himself is a pastor in Texas. 
There is as well in the Christmas season, you have the commercials where everybody's got the perfect tree and the perfect present and the perfect meal and the turkey looks amazing and the family looks amazing. And there are sometimes people who they can't connect with their family. They're alone. They're lonely. Uh, People get into depression. Uh, Pastorally, how do you treat that situation of of the people who are trying to meet an expectation that uh, scripture doesn't set, but the world around them does? Yeah. The fact is that changes in life can be very destabilizing to Christmas tradition, to the to the traditions we place around Christmas. Uh, but they can also help us to understand maybe better than the people who aren't going through difficult times uh, about the, the true meaning and uh, significance of, of the gospel of Jesus Christ as it applies to the idea of Christmas. I, mean, I can say for myself, Right now, at this moment in my life, uh, I'm, I'm having both the worst Christmas and the best Christmas that I've ever had all at the same time. Um, our, in my family, our Christ- Christmas traditions uh, are dying um, uh, alongside my mother, who has Alzheimer's and is at a very advanced stage of that. And so my dad passed away in 1997. Uh, Mom has been the nucleus that held our family together, uh, one of four siblings, and we're all, you know, married, and there are a bunch of grandkids and all of that, and uh, for a long time, our Christmas tradition was centered around gathering uh, around her in her home. My mom's been an amazing cook, a tremendous hostess, and that's gone now. Uh, She's at a point now where not only can she not cook, she can barely eat. Uh, Not only can she not host everyone, uh, she can't even identify everyone, her her kids who who come to visit her. And, uh, you know, as a result of that, this Christmas looks very different uh, for me and for my family uh, than past Christmases have looked. And, And in that way, with regard to what we traditionally have done at Christmas, uh, it's, a, it's a terrible Christmas. But, um, you know, several months ago, she was having trouble taking her medicine. And um, the, the people at her facility had asked my brother uh, to, to help her take her medicine, to talk her into it, you know. And uh, so he got out a pill that she needed to take, and uh, he put that in her hand and told her to take it. And she started trying to take it, but she couldn't find her mouth, you know, Mm -hmm. just her brain wasn't working to do something as simple as that. And uh, my brother began to cry, um, just watching her struggle with something so basic and so hard to see somebody you love robbed of all of that. And just like a switch flipped inside of her, she saw her son crying and stopped what she was doing, gained a clarity in her eyes, looked straight at him and said, don't cry, son. God will get us through this. It'll be okay. Wow. And to see her lose every extra capacity that she ever gained, all the skills that she took pride in, to see her lose every affectation that she could ever come up with and to see that her faith in the one who came to be born at Bethlehem, her faith and his name means God will save her faith. And, and that one's ability to deliver her outlasted everything else in her mind, in her heart, all the way through to the end. And that just gives me a renewed appreciation for what Jesus was really doing at Christmas. That's Bart Barber, the president of the Southern Baptist Convention. I uh, was not expecting that for him to be as transparent and open as he was. Uh, I'm going to play the full interview with him next Friday for my Christmas show, along with uh, Derek Thomas, my seminary professor who taught me systematic theology, uh, a couple others I've got for you. I'm, we're, we're trying to get scheduled in there. 
Uh, in addition to me, I'll be back. Y'all all know why I do this. Um, I, I actually think it was about today, 16 years ago, I had to look my wife in the eyes and tell her she was going to die. Uh, she was given six months to live. And uh, thankfully, it was a misdiagnosis, but I had to be the one to tell her. You have six months to live. You, you've got a terrible cancer. It it was a rough go. Uh, a lot of us go through rough times in the holiday seasons. Uh, my my reason for wanting you to go on and hear that now instead of waiting until the run up is you're going to be under a lot of stress for the next week or so. I suspect most of you, you're traveling, you're planning. I am under an inordinate amount. I will just be honest with you. I. I'm going to be gone the week after Christmas and a good portion of the week before, and I have a lot of stuff I've got to record. I have a lot of paperwork I've got to process. I'm moving out of my house into a um, into an office. You want to hear my one dumb thing that I did today? My wife came in and said, we can't. Uh, I, I, I tried to make a, a transaction, and, and I got a text message from the bank. It wouldn't go through, and it was only 7 bucks. What's going on? Y'all, I was rushing so much last night because I wanted to take advantage of a sale because I needed some uh, camera lights for my office that I bought these camera lights that were were super cheap for my office. And I wound up pulling all of the equipment purchases for the new office out of my bank account instead of my office bank account and have no money in my bank account this morning. And I had no idea. I I, I was rushing. I was It was like 1 o'clock in the morning. And I pushed the button and the transaction went through. And then I got out the store. I was like, oh, great. Now I got to move money from one bank to another bank. And, and thankfully, everything got taken care of quickly this morning. But I was like, oh, oh look, I totally get it. I, I, I totally get the stresses of the holiday season. And so I just want you guys to this is the president of the Southern Baptist Convention. His family is going to have a, a Merry Christmas with a tinge of sadness to it, as a lot of people are. Uh, it's not just you. You are not alone in that. And for those of you who actually are going to have a fantastic Christmas, for you sociopaths who did get the Lexus with the giant red bow on top or the Porsche or whatever to to surprise your spouse, uh, you, you clearly got some spare cash laying around if you did that. Well, actually, after that, you don't. You're in my situation. <laughs> Invite people over. Be merry and bright with others. Um, share the, your the joy of your season with those who might be going through a hard time right now. Uh, and keep Bart Barber and his family in your prayers, please. Uh, all of us can. I was just I was shocked that he would be that open and share that. Now, I wanted to start the show. I realize it's not news, and I try to start with all the big news of the day. But that was just too important to share. Uh, not to not share. So uh, I'm going to move on. We're going to open the phones. I'll take your phone calls, 877-973-7425. When we come back, we will start with the news. And I do have some news I have confirmed from the Secretary of State of Georgia's office that he was misquoted and has no intention of trying to pass ranked choice voting in Georgia. Thank goodness. I have heard from enough members of the state legislature in Georgia that I believe it would be dead even if it came. But there is a proposal afoot that the Secretary of State does back. It would bring the state of Georgia into line with a lot of other states. I'll tell you what it is when we come back. A friend of mine and I were discussing bowl and branch sheets the other night when he was sitting on the front porch with me, and he didn't believe that they got softer and softer every time you washed them. His wife was not convinced at all. She figured it was all marketing hype. Now she wants bowl and branch sheets for all of their beds at home. Why? Because they really do get softer every time you wash them. They're free of toxins, pesticides, harsh chemicals at every step of the process. They're the finest 100% organic cotton on earth. They're made by artisans who earn the pay and the respect they deserve. And right now you can bring home a better night's sleep this holiday season with bowl and branch bedding. Their signature sheets even come wrapped and ready in a beautiful holiday gift box. It's going to look good. It's going to feel great. For a limited time, get 20% off your first set of sheets and free shipping when you use promo code Eric at bowlandbranch.com. That's bowlandbranch, B-O-L-L-A-N-D branch.com. Promo code is Eric, E-R-I-C-K at bowlandbranch.com. Hello there, it's Eric Erickson here, delighted to have you with me, uh, and thanks again to Bart Barber, you can hear the full interview next Friday, I will be back with you, you'll hear guest hosts Monday to Thursday, I will tell you why I won't be here, uh, 
I, so I try. Uh, I, I know a lot of people are like, oh, just give me cash. Um, I, I while I give employees some money at the end of the year, and and I've got a couple who work with me on my my national side of the show uh, that I'm responsible for. I actually um, sent Charlie and his family to Montana. Plane tickets are just so expensive right now. It's like let let me do it. Um, so him and his family are headed to Montana to see his family for Christmas. They'll have a white Christmas. My gosh. Uh, and then I'm taking Philip to Las Vegas next uh, on this coming Monday uh, to shoot machine guns in the desert and go to a hockey game and take a helicopter into the Grand Canyon, uh, land in the Grand Canyon and, and do a sightseeing tour, going with a, a mutual friend. Uh, well, I, I actually, Philip doesn't know the guy, but he's a Tennessee volunteer fan, so I just assume they're all connected. In any, yeah, I'm going with two Tennessee fans. So in any event, um, but then I'll be back on Friday for the Christmas show. Now, I got to clarify the Secretary of State's office. They reached out to me. I should say sources familiar with the thinking of the Secretary of State. Uh, he was misquoted by a reporter. There was a story out, originated in the New York Times and moved to Reason Magazine, that Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger intends to take to the Georgia legislature next year a proposal for ranked choice voting. I am told the reporter misunderstood what Brad Raffensperger was saying. He said he supported ending the runoff, not ranked choice voting. It was instead interpreted as he supported ending the runoff by doing ranked choice voting. That, not, that's, that's not the case uh, from what I am told reliably. What I am told specifically is the Secretary of State's office believes it's time to get rid of runoffs in Georgia, uh, in large part because very typically the person who comes in first wins again. And that's not always the case. Uh, there are other reasons, uh, cost and taxpayer money and the annoyance of them and all of that. There is a receptiveness in the state legislature for doing that. There is no receptiveness to ranked choice voting, praise the Lord. Now, that'll upset some friends of mine who are undoubtedly listening right now. Um, I, I kind of think if there's a good compromise, it's if someone gets to above 45% or higher, no runoff. If nobody gets to 45%, then do a runoff. But I'm okay with no runoff. Um. I'm I'm very okay with it, and I'm I'm really opposed to ranked choice voting. Um, one of the big issues here with ranked choice voting as well is there's a lot of more computers and human error and stuff involved, and we got a bunch of crazy people who think that there are all sorts of conspiracies already. So yeah, I, I give them a heckler's veto. Um, they they need to learn how the current process works, and there's deep skepticism about the current process. This is nationwide, not just Georgia. We've got a lot of people who would rather buy the conspiracy than believe the truth, and that's that's a problem. Now, when we come back, we got other news. I, I want to actually play you some. Uh, it's, it's 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 quite a bit of a congressional hearing yesterday. The congresswoman from South Carolina, Nancy Mace was at a congressional hearing on threats and threats to democracy and the like and had a barn burner of a hearing where she turned the tables on the Democrats' witnesses to the point that the Democratic chairman of the committee, Jamie Raskin, facepalmed like he couldn't believe that the committee had been hijacked in that way. Right now, though, just one comment. I don't want to spend a lot of time on Joe Biden and the Democrats signing the uh, gay marriage bill yesterday. I do think you're going to start seeing a lot of independent private charities that are faith-based persecuted, not just prosecuted, but persecuted, hounded out of their tax exempt status, hounded out of the ability to help the government. You should know, and it is true that they invited a drag queen to the ceremony yesterday whose most famous tweet is that kids like to sing and suck. And I'll leave the rest to your imagination. Yeah, that's who got invited to the White House for this. We are watching the cultural collapse. Decline is a choice. 
and many in this nation have made the choice to decline as a nation. Um, kind of pathetic. Okay. When we come back, Nancy May, she is the libertarianish Republican congresswoman from South Carolina's 1st Congressional District. She's down there on the coast. Uh, she represents the Charleston area. She is far less of a social conservative than me, very libertarian, fiscally very, very strong. I actually very much like her and used to not. Uh, I, I think she's actually become a great congresswoman. And my goodness, you pop your popcorn, folks. Because we got a popcorn moment on this radio program when we come back listening to Nancy Mace give the business to the left. Howdy, welcome. It is Eric Erickson here across the nation. The phone number is 877 973 7425. Should you wish to be on this here program, uh, very happy for you to be here. I have got to play you some audio. Uh, this is from Nancy Mace at uh, the House Oversight Committee hearing on white supremacy. Now, Carolyn Maloney is actually the chair. Jamie Raskin is one of the ranking Democratic members who was actually in the chairman's seat yesterday overseeing this hearing. I don't want to play for you the full thing, but uh, this opening here, my goodness. Uh, Nancy Pace is with these various Democrats and progressives who are the hearing witnesses, and she wants to ask them about extreme rhetoric, and does that extreme rhetoric provoke violence? Is rhetoric on social media a problem and a threat to our democracy, Mr. Ward? Yes, absolutely. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Ms. Car Caraballo? Yes. Ms. Numani? Yes. Ms. Tyler? Yes. Yes. Um, <clears throat> another question I have, uh, do you believe that rhetoric targeting officials with violence for carrying out their constitutional duties um, is a threat to democracy, Mr. Ward? Mr. Siegel. Yes. 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 <clears throat> All right. Thank you very much. Only a few weeks after the attempted attack on a Supreme Court justice on June 25th, one of the witnesses, Alejandra Caraballo, tweeted out the following in response to a decision on abortion overturning Roe v. Wade. And I'll quote directly from the tweet. The six justices who overturned Roe should never no peace again. It is our civic duty to accost them every time they're in public. They are pariahs. Since women don't have their rights, these justices should never have a peaceful moment in public again. I know something about being accosted. The night of January 5th, I was physically accosted on the streets of DC in Navy Yard by a constituent of mine. I fervently blamed rhetoric rhetoric on social media, rhetoric at public events, for being physically accosted. I carry a gun everywhere I go when I am in my district and I'm at home because I know personally that rhetoric has consequences. I've had my car keyed. I've had my house spray painted. I had someone trespass in my house as recently as August. I've been doxxed on social media about where I live. Um, and I've had to add to security everywhere I go, often because I can't afford it. I have to carry my own firearm wherever I go. And um, Alejandra Caraballo also recently tweeted on November 19th, not even a month ago, that the Supreme Court, vested with the judicial power of the United States by our Constitution, stated they are not a legitimate court issuing decisions. And also the Supreme Court is an organ of the far right. So my last question today of Ms. Caraballo, do you stand by these comments, this kind of rhetoric on social media, and do you believe it's a threat to democracy? Thank you, Representative, for the opportunity to clarify and provide context to my tweets. <clears throat> um, I have a question, is it yes or no? Do you believe your rhetoric is a threat to democracy when you're calling to accost a branch of government, the Supreme Court, I don't believe that's a correct uh, characterization of my tweeted, statements. Though. Did you not tweet that? That you thought that the Supreme Court justices should be accosted? Did what I'm saying is that, 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 that is no? not a accurate 
characterization of my statements. On June 8th of this year, a man was arrested near Justice Brett Kavanaugh's home in Maryland. He told law enforcement officers he wanted to k kill a Supreme Court justice. He was found um, uh, with uh, a knife, with a pistol, two magazines, ammunition, pepper spray, zip ties, a hammer, crowbar, and duct tape. Ms. Carabayo. On page 12 and 13 of your written testimony, you this painted is Byron Donalds as having been infiltrated by white nationalists and far-right militia groups, which played a significant role in school board protests. This has, not, this has not actually been my experience with concerned parents. In your testimony, you wrote that in Loudoun County, Virginia, unfounded rumors that spread in local parent groups on Facebook about an alleged trans student sexually assaulting a girl in a bathroom led to a firestorm of, of several heated school board protests that descended into violence. But in fact, the perpetrator, it actually turned out, had committed two sexual assaults at two different Loudoun County schools in 2021 and was arrested on October 7th, 2021 by the Loudoun County Sheriff's Office. That was uh, Byron Donalds uh, going off of Nancy Mason. Same, same trans activist, Alejandro Carballo. It was nice to see them turn the tables on a progressive activist like this. That progressive activist literally did make that tweet. Let me read you the tweet. The six justices who overturned Roe should never know peace again. It is our civic duty to accost them every time they are in public called out on the tweet. Well, let me let me put it in context. That's not really that's not what I meant. Your words literally said they should be accosted every time they go in public. Totally discrediting everything else this person said. There's a point here. You can't see it on radio. But sitting next to Nancy Mason, the chairman chair, chair, was Jamie Raskin, Democratic member of Congress. When Mace begins to read this person's tweet, Raskin's face palms and shakes his head, and he can't believe it. I've noticed a trend. Most of you are not highly online, and you should thank God for that. You really should. But there is this disturbing trend on social media now where people on the left scream nonstop about how bad things are now that Elon Musk is in charge. Twitter hasn't changed at all, by the way. I've been on Twitter for quite a long time. Nothing has really changed at all. They're, they're screaming because people on the left have started having their accounts blocked for infringing on Twitter's terms of service. That happened to conservatives for a long time, but, but everything is new to the left. To the left, these things never happened before to them, and now they're happening to them, and they think this is the worst place ever. So suddenly the national media is covered. There's actually a story out today that a group of prominent progressive activist lawyers have gotten a hold of Elon Musk's immigration application, and they're going over it line by line to see if he lied so they can try to terminate his citizenship. I wonder if they're going to get the long-form birth certificate from Hawaii in the process. This is an African immigrant to the United States, and they're trying to get his citizenship rejected because he bought their fourth plaything. And he's allowed Donald Trump to come back. In June, July, and August of 2020, riots broke out around the country after the death of George Floyd. In many parts of the country, businesses were burned and ransacked. Here in Atlanta, uh, there's this restaurant I used to go to, Del Frisco's Grill, it's in Buckhead, nice part of the city, used to be a nice part of the city. Yeah, the place has never been the same since since between the riots and the COVID lockdowns. The place has just never been the same. I, I, I wish management could do something to, to get the place back on its feet. It's just kind of sad to go in there. The food's okay still. Some of it's good, but it's just it's not, not a great not, – not like it was before all that. There are businesses that went out of business. Their front windows were smashed. They were robbed. 
And the left, you will recall, on TV called them mostly peaceful, fiery but mostly peaceful protests. They really didn't care about the story. They really didn't care about the 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 problems. They really didn't care. The media didn't. And so they chose to ignore it. They chose not to pay attention to it. They chose to move on to other things. But the January 6th riots, oh my gosh, we're still talking about them. We're having congressional hearings on them. Nobody wanted congressional hearings on the clearly orchestrated, clearly coordinated attacks and riots. I mean, there were groups literally leaving piles of bricks in different parts of cities so that the rioters would have immediate access to them. Who provided the bricks? Who provided the coordination to leave them there? In the Republican National Committee meeting in Tampa, Florida in 2012, an Antifa group was leaving piles of bricks on street corners in a court coordinated effort to encourage violence. The Democrats never bothered to investigate that. In Portland, Oregon, it became very clear there was outside assistance to the Antifa activists who were trying to tear down the federal courthouse there where Donald Trump had guards try to block it. Portland's gone down the drain since, but there's very clearly some level of coordination. The media has had no interest in pursuing. The Democrats have had no interest in pursuing. But January 6th, January 6th, were the Russians involved? What about the coordination? What about the Proud Boys? This is not to say January 6th deserves a pass. It should be condemned, but so should the riots. This is not to say Elon Musk has no justification for banning lefties on Twitter any more than Twitter had justification for some on the right. In fact, some people needed to be blocked on Twitter. Arguably, on January 6th, Donald Trump needed to be blocked for his own good, frankly. But the media never cared about the one. They only care about the other. Democrats probably had no idea that this person testifying before the House Oversight Committee had made these tweets. Probably had no idea. It was just a good witness who had written about the rise of white supremacy and social media violence, and they were completely ignorant that this person had also tweeted about accosting members of the Supreme Court. Had no clue. Certainly didn't realize Republicans would call him out on it. Turnabout is fair play. It reminds you of what a bubble these people are in, what a bubble they are in. They they completely ignore these sorts of stories until it impacts their side, and then the media, which is on their side, goes full gusto into covering them as if it's never happened before, and one builds off the other. I would argue to you, and I really do believe this, that the Republicans, Trump-supporting people who stormed the Capitol on January 6th probably never would have done it or never done it to the extent they did it had they not seen the media give a complete pass to the 2020 riots. They looked at that and said, well, they can get away with that. Let's see what we can get away with. The one provoked the other. And you can scream and cry and say that's not true and that's not fair, but it absolutely is. If you bother listening to any of the people on the right who justified those riots in January 6th, every single one of them brought up, well, the media didn't care when Antifa rioted. I mean, to this day, the media denies Antifa is even a thing. The one led to the other. But the media refuses to acknowledge it or even examine how it played a role in provoking it. I was so worked up at the end, I forgot to tell you about Patriot Mobile, which I must do and tell you you should move your cell service to them because they share your values. They are a Christian conservative cell phone provider. They actually support those causes. It's how their business was structured. Uh, They would love for you to do business with them. You can port your cell phone number over to them. You can, I mean, you you can bring your phone number over or you can get a brand new one. If you have an unlocked phone, you can bring that over. You get guaranteed great service. They use the same cell towers everyone else uses. What you do is go to patriotmobile.com slash Eric, patriotmobile.com slash E-R-I-C-K. You can also call them 972-PATRIOT, 972-PATRIOT. Tell them I sent you, you get free activation. You get great discounts if you're a veteran, a first responder, a teacher. You got an, you're got an NRA member. You got a large family. You need multiple cell phones. You can get a great deal from Patriot Mobile, but then they take a portion of their profits and give those profits to the causes you care about. So it's worth doing business with them. PatriotMobile.com slash E-R-I-C-K. 
all right, I got to move on now. Um, I Let's see here. Where are we? Uh, CNN and TikTok. That's what I got. So Oliver Darcy is CNN's media reporter now that Brian Stelter is gone. And he went on, and you got I, I don't want to play this full audio, but you got to listen to some of this. Senator Marco Rubio aims to ban TikTok in the U.S. The legislation is an escalation of a recent move by red state governors to eliminate the app from state devices. Alabama and Utah are the latest to join the effort. South Dakota was the first state to uh, do it over concerns that China, the government there, can access TikTok's, uh, TikTok's information since its parent company is based in China. A TikTok executive testified to Congress that the company does not share data with the Chinese government. CNN's Oliver Darcy is here with details. So tell us about uh, the moves to get rid of TikTok. Yeah, I think there are two things going on here, right? One is that lawmakers have legitimate concerns about TikTok, mm. about uh, whether U.S. data can be assessed by the Chinese, which obviously t TikTok says no, and then whether China could eventually tweak the algorithm maybe at some point to alter U.S. perception toward the Chinese government. Those are some concerns that lawmakers have. I think the other thing that's happening here is Republican lawmakers primarily are using TikTok as the face of the Chinese government. And so to show to their constituents, which is very popular right now to have a hard stance on China, to show to their constituents that they're taking this hardline stance, they are basically um, saying we want to ban TikTok and using this as a vehicle to deliver that message. I, I don't think it's wise for CNN to make this about Republicans and Republicans try to be hard on China. Mark Warner is the Democratic chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee. Mark Warner is openly advising parents to delete TikTok and keep it off their children's phones because it can be used to build a facial recognition database by China. We know that ByteDance, which is the parent company of TikTok, uh, pushed out their old chairman who's now living in Singapore, avoiding the Chinese government. They have bragged in the past about helping the Chinese, Chinese military in particular. This is a company that is a front for the Chinese government. There's really not any dispute. Yes, TikTok says it's not true, but the data doesn't back up their denials. The data actually bolsters the case that they're an intelligence threat. So to go on CNN and to have CNN say, well, this is all about Republicans and Republicans want to be tough on China. What it does is in an age when people define themselves as I'm for what the other guy is against, it makes it a partisan issue to be, well, I'm for TikTok because screw Marco Rubio and the Republicans. That's not wise. It's dishonest as well when you have the chairman of the Intelligence Committee, who is a Democrat, saying the same thing. And by the way, Marco Rubio has bipartisan legislation. Democrats are on board his legislation as well to ban TikTok. So why go with the it's a Republican thing? It discredits it. I, I got to tell you um, – there is room in this country. I really do believe there's room in this country for a straight news organization that doesn't have the the uh, Rachel Maddow's or the Joy Reeds or the Tucker Carlson's or the Sean Hannity's, but also doesn't have the Don Lemons of the world. It's just a straight newscast. Here is the news of the day. Here are all of the facts, whether they're convenient to your side or not. This is the truth. You decide what you think about it. There is, there is I think, a market for that beyond the partisan emotional hysteria. And you're not getting that at CNN. They're still too stuck in the R versus D dynamic. It's one reason you should be subscribing to my email every day because I try to do that. Just give you the big news stories of the day with the facts and let you make up your mind. If you text data to 33777, click that top link, you can subscribe to my daily Substack email and get the show prep email that is show prep for your mind. I don't want to tell you what to think, but I sure would like to give you all of the facts so that you can make up your mind on what uh, you think about a situation. When we come back, I want to give you the facts on the border situation that suddenly is in the news again, coincidentally maybe, that the election is over. Hmm. Lucky Land Casino, asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. 
More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kids' PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.